Welcome to the channel. I'm Mike and in today's video, I wanna share some tips on how you can troubleshoot a digital sports watch. I've been on the lookout for bargain vintage mechanical wristwatches for the channel. And in the process, I keep finding clean Casio and Timex digital sports watches. I found this Timex Iron Man for $3. It looked like it was in great shape, but it wasn't running, possibly just needing a new battery. Well, with the new battery, it lit up and then it shut off and then it reset itself, rinse and repeat over and over. This video shows how to completely disassemble it down to the display and the circuit board and what to look for if you have a watch that either won't start up or behaves inconsistently. This is model T5E901 and wasn't running and I was hoping I could just do a battery change on it. And so I pulled it apart, opened it up. I did a battery change, took off the strap. We're gonna get this cleaned up. And I took the movement out of the case after I did the, uh, the first battery change and I could not get the movement running. I couldn't get the display to light up. So right now it's running intermittently and I'm not quite sure what's going on. So my goal today is um, I got it a fresh battery in, I got it to work, but when you move it around and, and you recase it, the display was turning off. So I guess what I want to do right now is in, in addition to, um, you know, giving the case a, a deep clean, I want to see if I can probe this movement to see if I can figure out where there might be something loose that's causing the display to turn off. So today this is just about diagnosing where there may be, hopefully if it's just a loose connector, um, seeing if we can locate where it is and then hopefully just reseat it if it's something loose or if it's, if it's a deeper problem, I just want to try to get a better understanding. So I'm going to start off just by going around the top and I just want to probe different places and just watch the display. And we're getting a little bit of flashing down there on the side and not really going to worry about that. As, as you know, sometimes when you, when you press on an LCD display, it does fun things. Okay. So on, on the top part of the case, it seems all right. And now I'm going to, start working my way around the outside. I, I know you can't see, can't see the display on uh, all of the cameras. Let me see if I can move around here to facilitate that. Um, these are the switches. Ah, that was interesting. Did you see that? So um, just for orientation, what was that switch? That switch was the set recall uh, button. And <laughs> indeed, it, it looks like it, it started to set. So not quite sure what happened there, but it, it didn't look normal. So yeah, there, there's definitely something wonky in this area. So let me just see if this settles. And if the display comes back on. Yeah, so this seems to be completely resetting. So I'm going to go around and, and try a few of the other buttons. You know, again, just for orientation with, with the top of the watch up here, that's the set recall. Set recall, then there's the mode button, stop reset. There's the light, and then there's the uh, start and split for the stopwatch. Okay, so, so right now we've managed to shut down the display. I'm 
Okay, so there, there's a good demonstration of kind of what's going wonky. Let's continue to work our way around. It wanted to work. That was kind of interesting there. Looks like it says it, it, it. So there you go. There's another poke on that set we call button. It seems to resolve. So let me see. I'm just going to keep spinning, trying the different buttons. There's mode. Okay, so when the display works, looks like mode is changing. Did it just reset again? Let's see, 12 o'clock? No? Yeah. So something keeps resetting. Um, all right. So there's, that's the start split time. So that seems to be doing all right. This is the stop reset button. No OCCN. Okay. When the display is working, it looks fine. There's the indigo light. Now, I, I think I may have just pressed on the other side see what's going on here, get a better grip. Okay, so the light button is not causing any, any issue. Really, this, this part of the watch over here, where the set recall button is, that seems to be kind of freaking it out. I don't know if it's the button itself. Let me see if I, if I hold it really still. Trying to establish whether it's a mechanical problem or an electrical problem. Now, when I'm depressing this switch, hold set. Okay, so electrically, it, it seems to be working okay. I think it's mechanically, when it gets jiggled, there seems to be a problem. Okay, so at least now we know Yeah, so this button's working. This is the mode and I'm able to cruise through the different times, different functions, the alarms. Yeah, there, there seems to be something mechanical making the display go in and out and consequently resetting that display. So let's take this apart. What do you say? Is that screw locked in? Close enough. You stay there. All right. So here's the battery. This is a fresh CR2025 battery. And um, for what it's worth, there was a sticker on the back of the battery that roughly said this. If I could position this because the positioning is important. I just copied down what it said. Um, after replacing the battery, there's two contacts in here that you're supposed to short circuit out. I'll just point to them here so my hand's not in the way. Um, you're supposed to put a pair of tweezers across those two contacts. And that should reset the movement, but it seems that once it's been set, you, you don't need to reset it. At least that was my experience. Um, but I did reset that plenty thinking that was my problem in getting the watch started. But I, I do think the problem is, is more mechanical in nature. However, you will see a sticker in the battery or on the battery uh, that advises to um, reset it. 
The other thing that we want to pay attention to is it looks like there's an insulator here um, trying to protect that battery from shorting out. There's the negative connector for the battery down at the bottom. And then this entire area here is insulated. And the only positive connection for the battery is the clip. So this clip rides across the top of the battery or the plus side of the battery. And right here, there's a little foot, a little feeler. And that little contact touches that pad right in that hole. So that's the only exposed positive connector and that's the only exposed negative connector and this insulator on the back we want to make sure when the back is reinstalled that this covers the battery and in fact that sticker that was on there <laughs> that actually covered the entire battery and probably acted as a a second level of insulator so it's kind of interesting that they've isolated the battery in this watch so it looks like the movement consists of sort of two half shells, top, bottom, or call that, we'll call this the top, there's the display side, top or battery side. And it appears that the two are held together with these clips. It makes sort of a sandwich with the circuit board in the middle. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure that all of these clips are secure. Because it could be something as simple as the, uh, the battery is getting disconnected. Okay, so it looks like all of the clips are engaged going around movement. So that's the first thing. So let me reorient myself and this is the, the problem area right there that was glitching the watch. So let me just take a, a closer look there. And I can't see anything mechanically that seems awry. Now, the next thing that was suspect was it, it seemed that the problem was almost as if the power was coming and going. So there, since there's only two places where the power comes into this watch, there's positive and there's negative. So is it possible that there's a mechanical fault by either the positive or, or negative terminals. And, and let me just remind myself. Okay, so this is the set recall. There's the set recall button. That's right there. So this is kind of the problem area. And coincidentally, that's also right about where the um, the negative terminal is on this watch. So let's pop it open. Let's see how easily these clips release. That one almost volunteered itself. It's saying free me. Will this one be so willing? Since that's the double, I'll treat that as a hinge because it doesn't really have the tabs that make it look easy. Okay, there we go. Oh, jump back on, that's okay. Off. I can feel the ones on the other side jumping back on as popping these off. Okay, that one stayed off. Pop that one back off. There we go. 
So with those side ones off, I think the others will act as a hinge. Let me see if I can lift it away. And I'm looking just to make sure that this plastic cover does not have any electrical connectors on it because I don't want to separate the electronics. I'm hoping that it's just protective. And we'll force it. Okay. And maybe we do want to see if we can pop these. There we go. I'm free. All right. So we do have some electronics there. So what do we have? Well, we have these two contact springs that came out and it appears that one end is wider than the other. We'll have to go back and hopefully see if we pick that up on the videotape. Um, which end went up, which end went down. We have this plastic insulator. And what have I done here? I think I may have, well, I'm not quite sure. Well, no, maybe, maybe that is correct. So it looks like it, it's split between Two of the teeth are above and one of the teeth is below, but we'll, we'll go back and check the video. So let's put that aside. We'll keep that in the relative same position. Here's our springs. Move those out to the side. So first things first, I just want to visually look on this side. See if there's anything out of place. See if a battery, did a battery go bad in here that could be causing insulation problems. So this is the area, just to, to reorient ourselves. This is the area that seemed to be cutting the display in and out. So that's near us now, it's over here. And here's the various contacts. I don't see any corrosion or any reason why we'd be losing that battery connection. So now the next question is, does this metal guard come off. So we do have a spring here that's between the two close together clips and there's a spring there. I don't know if that's for electrical connection or whether that's just for protection of some sort. But it looks like this metal shroud is separating easily. And I'm going through looking around. I don't see any other springs. And I just want to be slow and steady. Okay, we're back to the point where we started and there's that spring. Come on, got a bit of a seesaw effect going on there. So let's see if there's anything other than the display under this shroud. So we do have this spring. There we go. And this spring appears to be somewhat smaller than the other springs. I guess this white nylon part 
is sandwiched between the screen, the LCD, and the circuit board. Definitely, I, I sense a sandwich going on. I'm looking for electrical connectors, and it appears that those two little salmon colored, um, don't know what you want to call them, maybe those are connections between the circuit board and the LCD screen. So I'm looking for other places that there might be like a little ribbon cable or a connection because if we are going to try to lift off the screen to look under it, we don't want to break the connection. Let's see if we can have a peek behind the screen. And, oh, you know what? Here's where it's connected. Is that right over there? Is that, is that a little cable? I think it might be. No, that's interesting. Okay, so we want to make note of this. Looks like there's a piece of insulation there. It looks like a little shock block, feels like foam. And it looks like the screen is gonna hinge on the top. Well, that's crazy. Okay, so what's going on here? The screen completely came out and there's a bunch of connectors underneath right there hey did you see that that's crazy look at that i touched it what is going on there that's creepy let's take a look at the back gosh it looks like even though i thought this was foam these must be contacts And those contacts, well, they make contact down here. And, and is it possible that that's the source of the problem? Maybe. And then we have this white sheet. And it's very possible that this is... Is it an insulator? Well... It looks like it has two contacts on it, or is that just a hinge? I thought for a minute that that might be the uh, the Indiglo panel. So this hinges in there, and really everything is so solid state in here. My mission is to look to see if there's anything mechanical that needs to be readjusted. And short of that, the only other thing I really feel like I could do is, is just make some little touches just to make sure that all of the connectors are connecting. I don't know if any of these little pieces of dust are of consequence, but we can, we can lightly remove them. I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol. We're just going to take a very little bit of isopropyl alcohol, pick it up on the swab. First thing I want to do is just very lightly just roll this across what I suspect is that little contact block that feeds the information to the screen. So if there is any residue in there, clean it up. Yet one more thing we can remove. And there is a little pin right there. Don't want to break that. Now, is that welded on? Nope. It came away. All right. So now we are down to the circuit board. And, and interestingly, it looks like this is another one of those contacts. And logically then these black strips might be uh, transmitting electrical information. So with the isopropyl alcohol, I'm just going to do a very gentle 
clean up on these contacts. So if anything, oh, you know what? Did that just wiggle? Yep, look at that. Um, okay, well, how is this adhered? Is this another one of these little contacts? Okay. So this little thing, this little pad, looks like it just sat right there. And that's what I think we were seeing earlier. And that might be making contact with these two little terminals. I don't really think that there's any problem with uh, the connectors on here. So here's the plan. We're going to put it back together and see if the disassembly and reassembly made any difference. Sometimes that's all it takes. We'll line that little hole and I'm taking care to watch those little orange connectors and actually I'm not using that much care because I seem to be squishing one of them. Let me back out of this because maybe we want to insert that little orange connectivity pad into the slot. That would be my guess. So let's do that first. What a strange setup. Is this one on there tight? Yeah, that's, that's on there kind of tight. Who would have thought there were so many components? Okay, that seems to have gone back together well. Try not to use fingers too much here, so I don't want to get my hand oiled, but this looks like it wants to, I think it wants to be sandwiched. I'm going to back out the circuit board. Ooh, that's way backed out, isn't it? Okay, I didn't want to back it out that much. And now I can press those two little conductive pads down. I'm now going to attempt to slide this into that little void that we created, and I believe we've done that. And now, making better contact. Can we keep that in there? Yep, there it is. And we'll press it into place. And now when we sandwich the plastic piece, with the circuit board, we're making contact with those two terminals on this backlight display. All right, slip on some finger cots here just because I don't want to get any, any more hand oils on the display than I already have. So the display will go in the downward position here. And there's that conductive pad there and the conductive pad here. And that seems to have dropped right into place. Is there a click? No. Yes, a little click. So here's that little spring. And the spring goes into this top hole. Come on, little spring, drop in there. Thank you. I don't know if that's shock absorption or, or circuit, but 
There it is. Just want to put it back the way it was when we took it apart. I'm going to put the metal clip back in place that holds the screen down. Let's see, can we back that out a little bit? Just until we clear. I think we can. There we go. Now we're on the outside. We'll firm it down. Make sure the little spring is still in place. There we go. It's all firmed. Now let's line this up. I wonder if that fork is supposed to be split by this insulator. I checked the video and it, it wasn't. It seemed like all of the little pins were on the same side. But just suppose this watch was serviced by someone else and they missed the fact that that middle pin was supposed to be down. What that would mean would be there'd be an intermittent connection here with the negative side. And I think that that third pin is supposed to make contact with that big area. That, if that pin was on the outside of that insulator instead of the inside, I believe that could cause an intermittent in the connection. And maybe when we pressed on that button, it was contacting the back part of the pin. So I'm, I'm going to leave that forward. I've marked that there's a spring here and a spring here. One spring goes here and the other spring will go here. Spring one, spring two. Let's make sure that our insulator is centered. And now I'm just going to keep a pretty good grip on this. See if we can drop this down. onto the plastic. I want to make sure all of those little clips are on the outside. Don't lose the springs, Mike. Nice. Nice and easy. Still have our springs. There we go, click. Those are clicked in place. And click. I don't want to case it back up yet because I want to clean this in the ultrasonic. Same thing for the uh, the back, although I since it has that insulator on there, I might not throw that through the ultrasonic. I'll just give this a, a manual cleaning. But I think we are ready to put the battery back in. So here is the battery. Okay, the clip drops in here. There's a hook on the back end. And with any luck, do we have a display? Hey, that's a good sign, people. That's a very good sign. So I'll put the case next to it again for reference. It was the set recall button that was being a real pain. Okay. So that's not turning off the display now. That's good. Here's the mode. Chrono. Nice. Timer, that's great, it's fine. Let's see, are our clips staying closed? Just do a quick visual check. Check that one more button. Okay, well, I seem to be making contact with all the buttons. So the little clips are staying closed, everything is intact, just doing a visual check. Springs are staying in place. And uh, 
Very nice. I think we can get this clean now. We'll give the strap a nice bath in the ultrasonic. It's actually a pretty nice dedicated strap. And we'll get this back together. So we'll move the gasket. I don't know if that's a proprietary gasket. That might be a round gasket that was just convinced into the shape. So we have the back cleaned up. The front is nice and clean and shiny inside and out. We have the straps looking fantastic. And here's the movement. Okay, let's get it together. And like any good Timex, I believe this one has taken a licking. Ease the little switches now. Pass those pushers. I don't want to force it, but it seems to be helping. Just depressing. There we go. So we depress the little um, switches as we put it in, and it seems to all be in place now. Once again, I've created a little note for myself just to remind me that there's a reset button here. That's what the other tag said. Where are they? They're right there. So I'm just going to leave this in the watch. I don't see it doing any harm. Just a little reminder because the other tag fell off. What's next is we're going to put a little bit of silicon on the gasket before replacing it. That's a very little bit and that's, that's way more than I need. Yeah, that's definitely way more than I should have put on. That's okay. Clean those tools as you go because you don't want to accidentally get silicone on something that shouldn't have it. And now we can seat the gasket. Don't want to press too hard though, because we don't want to damage the gasket. Okay, that's looking pretty lined up. So this looks like a uh, pretty symmetrical back. Actually, the ledge on this end, on the bottom end, is a little bit deeper than the ledge right there. Um, either way, we want to make sure we put it on correctly because there's that insulator on the back. Actually, as I'm looking at it, that, that insulator doesn't look like they did a, a fantastic job putting that little sticker on there. Looks a little bit off to the side, but that's okay. It shouldn't be a problem. The case just drops right in place. Okay, just make sure everyone, all the screws are snug down. If anyone is wondering the, um, the lug distance, it is a narrow 15.85 millimeters. And these are kind of proprietary straps. So on this strap, that mounting width, there it is. It's, it's a little bit over 15 and a half, so that'll fit well. But the strap itself, beyond those lugs, we're looking at a uh, 21 millimeter width on the strap. So it, it, it's not gonna look like it's too small. Look how thick the rubber is above that hole. So you really, you do get a nice density of material there. So you're not gonna tear out where that um, the hole goes through the, uh, the strap. All right. So there it is, our Timex Ironman Triathlon Watch. Triathlon. Triathlon. Well, there you go. Another successful bargain watch story. I hope you found the video helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm Mike, the channel is Watch With Mike. I look forward to our next time together. And what to look for if you have a watch that either won't start up or behaves intermittently. I can't say intermi intermittently. And what to look for if you have a watch that either won't start up or behaves intermittently.
I'm gonna change that. And what to look for if you have a watch that either won't start up or behaves indiscriminately. That doesn't work. Synonyms, synonyms, synonyms. Inter intermittently, inconsistently. And what to look for if you have a watch that either won't start up or behaves inconsistently.